I'm gonna tell y'all one thing, like, you know, when it comes to our friendship, bro, like the, what makes it really fun is that we, we're ready to share the tea. We're ready to go ahead and share what's going on. Yes, X, Y, and Z. Yes. You cannot explain it. As a, as, as a dad, as a, as a as a man, you still can't explain that sequence that happened. But the minute you see that head, the minute you see that, that baby pop out, you're like, what? <laughs> to see your name in the credits yeah. as the executive, like producer, writer, screenwriter, all yeah. these things. I was like, come now, on, uh, Mr. President. You know, uh, it's been it's been quite a privilege uh, to be on here uh, talking about it with Kate. And uh, what we've been doing is talking about it. <laughs> yes! Oh my God. Hi, and welcome to Talk About It with Kate. I'm Kate, and if you're new to this, welcome to the party. And if you're true to this, thanks for sticking around. So today, you guys, we have a very special guest. One of my dearest and truest friends. It's been like 14 years, not to age, not to age us too much, <laughs> <laughs> but I am so excited to announce none other than my friend, Darius Jackson. Yo, what Hi, up, Kate? It's, it's, it's actually crazy because well, um, with 29, you're turning 29 this year? I am turning 29. Not to go ahead and age, I hope that's not too much. But uh, yeah, um, the fact that we're pushing 30 and it's like, by next year, we're going to know each other for like half our lives. Half our half lives. Half our <gasps> years of existing on this earth. Oh we've my known goodness. Each other. It's a long time. Please stop doing it to me. <laughs> I'll cry right now. And the fact of the matter is like, we met freshman year of yeah. high school. Well, it would have had to have been. River Heights, I think we didn't, we, you know, middle school, We it was like. Yeah. Obviously, I knew who you were because you're so tall. Right. You're so tall. Yeah. Just, <laughs> but it, just, it wasn't until River Heights, we were like, you know, separated a little bit. Once we got to high school. And we all started yeah, planning because we yeah. were all stuck into our tracks, right? Yeah, in, yeah, in, definitely. In we school. were on a track system at school. So for the, if you don't know, it's like we were in school all year long and you only got your summer could have been in January. So. Right. And there was just a lot of kids. But anyways, <laughs> what track were you on, by the way? I was on C track. C track. I was on D track. You were on D track, okay, okay. Not too much on D track, okay. Um, Not too much. <laughs> D track, I, I felt, I felt there was a lot of just personalities on D track. So C track had all the cool kids, all I the feel, smart kids, cool, smart. You know, I, I thought C track was very, was very steady. It was very balanced. You know, okay, what I mean, it wasn't okay. too bad, and it wasn't, you know, too much of a like. You just, you just ride for your, for your team, I'm no matter what the team C -track. is. Okay. I'm gonna go for C track. You already know. <laughs> well, anyways, let's let's introduce you. You okay. know, because I know you. Yes. A lot of people do know you now, yes. but who is Darius Jackson? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a writer. I'm an actor as well. I'm a storyteller. That's why I put down on my Instagram bio storyteller just because it's very fun to create stories. And I've always had a lot in my mind. So, yeah. But overall, though, just just chill. You know, chill, cool dude. Chill, cool dude. Yep. Real chill. And so where do you see yourself in three years? I love to ask this question on my show. OK, that's a good question. Thank you. Um. <laughs> Let me see. So I, I do envision myself uh, hopefully getting on one of these these major streaming services, being on, you know, a show as either part of a creative or as an actor. So either or I'll be fine with. But within, yeah, within three years from now, that's what I would hope to go ahead and see. And then uh, honestly, don't tell nobody, but maybe like two, one or two more kids by then. But you know, that's a scare. <laughs> We need two consenting parties to that. <laughs> two more kids. Th three kids in three years, my love, is a lot. For the record, mm -hmm. let the record show. Right. That's a lot. It is. Okay. It is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, because, you know, we're in, this, we're in the astrology age. Okay. We are. What's we your are. sign? <laughs> I am an Aquarius. An Aquarius man. Yeah. You know, I personally, my little brother is an Aquarius. So they have a soft spot in my mm -hmm. heart. Well, you already have a soft spot in my heart, but Aquarius men are so like loving, so giving, so goofy. Like every single Aquarius man I know is just so silly. But you know, I feel like you you're the embodiment of an Aquarius. You know, yeah. I know I know there's a lot of um, downsides <laughs> to being an Aquarius. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I mean, there's downsides to every side though. Yeah, uh, you know, I say for sure. Um, you know, when you, when you hear about more Aquarius and the Aquarius vibe, I'm like, yeah, maybe that's me. Maybe. Maybe, maybe that's me. Maybe I'm the kind of guy to be like, you know, <laughs> yeah, we're we're doing this today. And maybe Darius from 
planet Z nine is is doing the same thing oh, with please. Caitlin from another planet. You know, I'll be doing that kind I'll of. I'll take vibe. that. I'll take that when the when the parallels you know meet. Yeah. I'm not I'm not him today. I was him yesterday. Right. I might be him tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, I got it. I got exactly. it. Exactly. Okay, and and we did drop that you are a family man now. Family man. And I can't congratulate you and Kiki enough on Thank your you so baby. Much. Yes. Also, the baby. Let's talk about the baby because he is adorable and he has a strong name. Please, I need you to drop the full name and then tell me how it came to be. Okay, so yeah, uh, Leotis Andrelton Jackson. And, um, you know, I think that uh, uh, me and Kiki, we're very old school people. We, we really like to go ahead and go back to the nostalgic era. You know, we love the, the, the 70s, uh, um, the ambience of the 70s. And we like the, the classic names of the 1940s and 50s. So yes. uh, definitely when we're... Um, you know, she was pregnant and we were just kind of going through names. It was really a no brainer to kind of go for more of a callback throwback name. And also just, a, a, a um, how do I say, just, just honoring both sides of our families. Yeah. And so what I mean by that is, so Kiki, her real name's Lauren and her siblings, they all start with L's. Uh, there's Laurencia, Lawrence, L'Oreal, and then Lauren, which is Kiki. And then on my side, uh, for more so uh, for the boys, since we was having a boys, we all end in S's. There's uh, Sharonis, oh Marcus, Darius. Yes. So uh, Leotis was a great name that combined both of our names, starting with an L, ending with an S, and I felt like that was a good way to honor both sides of our family. Okay, well. okay. Very, very intentional. Yes. I love that. Yes, it was and a lot his of name. Thought. You know when he gets uh, roll called in school, they're going to be like, who <laughs> is in this classroom right now? Because <laughs> that is a name, babe. And I love it. I love it. And yeah. I'm so happy for you guys. Thank and you so much. honestly, when you called me to yeah. tell me that Kiki was pregnant, did I not fall all the way off the planet? You Now, <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all one thing. Like, you know, when it comes to our friendship, bro, like the, what makes it really fun is that we we're ready to share the tea we're ready to go ahead and share what's going on yes, x y and z yeah, so that, yeah. that that's what makes it you know very like oh okay so when this was happening and then uh you know the thing about when it comes to the pregnancy you know the first trimester we don't really want to get too excited yeah. so also because the doctors they'd be kind of scaring us they'd be like eh, don't get too excited you know there's a 65 percent chance that yeah. it, this could happen and it's just like okay let's just not say anything until yeah. we know it's concrete and we know okay this is now this is an actual thing so uh, pretty much after the first trimester, we was now eager to start telling just the people and the closest people around us. And then so, um, what was it? We were randomly just uh, chopping it up one day. We were texting. I think we were, we were talking about, I don't even remember. I, oh, I think it was. Was we, it the reunion stuff? I, it might have been the reunion stuff, but we also came across an old friend. Oh, <laughs> yes, we did. Yes. We yes. came across an old friend <laughs> that I was very happy to go ahead and talk to Kate about. <laughs> Don't give them the tea, babe. No, okay. We're going we to pull that one back. But uh, that being said, um, but in the midst of all that, it was just like. Babe, you said, you said, I, I was, was talking, you know, you know me, I talking. Yep. Yep. And you finally told me who you were dating because it took you a minute to tell me. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, we'll just, we're just going to lay it out. When Darius and Kiki first started dating. And I think you, I was stranded at the airport one day and you picked me up. Right. And I was like, I was like stuck wherever right. I was. And, right. And I tweeted something or I, whatever. And you, you replied and I was yeah. like, you're not about to come get me. And so you came and got me yep. and you were like, yeah, I just started dating somebody new. And I was like, who? Like, but at the time you had been traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. I, was, so, I remember I was like in Atlanta. And you were in Atlanta. I, um, I went to your hometown, Houston. Yes. So, and then, um, yeah, it was a lot of back and forth. And then once I finally got settled in. That's when you yeah, called. Yeah, but you for, were like, yep. I'm not going to tell you because it's still new and, and I don't want to give too much and I don't want to jinx it and all this stuff. And yeah. I was like, so it is somebody in the industry, huh? <laughs> and then finally, when you told me, I think that I was so surprised, but not surprised mm -hmm. because of course, like, of course, who we know on television for Kiki to be and who, who I know for you to be and then for you to confirm that she is in fact as goofy, fun, loving, outgoing as you, I was like, oh, this is great. And then the other thing is, let's just, do, do, what am I saying? Like, let's just talk about the, the the fact of the matter is that Darius pulled up to our 10-year high school reunion with Kiki and everyone was like, wow. My nice car, forget about it. Right. <laughs> my, my job, forget about it. Darius came in as himself with the most beautiful woman and you guys are just like, you know, you match each other's energies. So that was 
perfect. It's so exciting for me. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was obviously, I mean, I think when it comes to the high school reunion part, you definitely do want to see everybody's just progress and just, because like, again, we're now in a position where everybody's having family. Like, I'm, you know, a lot of people that we're following on Instagram from our class, um, yeah, I'm seeing just getting married and, yeah. and I start having babies and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, dang, we're, we're all really transitioning into this. It's crazy to see. Adulthood now. Yeah. You know, at first, obviously we're in our 20s, so yeah, you know, you consider 20s adult, but I was, I was still being a, very much so a kid during most of my 20s. We're big kids in our 20s. It's, we're like, it's like you're forced to start to grow up and yeah. like face the responsibility of life and like you yeah. can't really be as immature and as childish as you want to be. I feel like your 30s is really like, okay, I'm cemented into adulthood. Yeah. But also you set the, you set the stones because like, you know, you and your baby will grow up together, mm -hmm. essentially. So... That's the other thing. I, when you became a father, when you realized you were going to be a father, mm -hmm. how do you feel like that affected you? And not negatively affected you or, but, or right. impacted you. That's the word I want to use. How do you feel like the day that you guys found out you were pregnant? So I think um, one thing for sure, I, I got to always, you know, I always applaud my father. Um, he, he really made it fun to be a dad. He was very engaging and did a lot of fun activities with us. Um, he took us to baseball games and go to the park with us. Before he was too big and his back was too out of whack, he would get on roller coasters <laughs> with us. You know what oh. I mean? Uh, uh, at Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah. So uh, he, he really made it fun being a father. So that's where, like, I think throughout the last two, three years, the idea of it started to really become prominent in my mind. Of Like, you know, hey, fatherhood is probably around the corner for me. I'm, I'm actually very, you know, very, uh, I would be open to it if, if I see an opportunity, if I see a situation that I just know, okay, this is going to be the best case scenario for me, yeah. you know, to know. Because obviously, I'm not going to be a dad just to be a dad. I want to be a dad just, you know. With just intention. With, with the yeah. intention of, of, of making sure I'm, I'm going to be the best partner for my wife and be the best father figure for my son and making sure that my son sees, you know, the mom and dad duo together, yeah. that, you know, and, and have a healthy household. So all that obviously had to come into play. So when yeah. that happened, when finding out, you know, okay, we're going we're gonna to do this, it was – it was almost like you put your suit on and you're just like. <laughs> okay. I'm the captain now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's happening. It's, it's happening. happening. And then uh, uh, it's, 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 it's that feeling that continues to go on. You see the belly continue to grow. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, well, right, look, it's, it's almost here. And then here's the interesting part about it. Just, this is just for me from a boy's perspective. Yeah. You know, I could only really feel so much, you know. Of course. Um, you know, his lovely mama, he, you know, she, she was connected with him all the time. She was attached, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, 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 she felt him the whole entire time. So I was almost a bit jealous. Oh. I was almost a bit jealous on how much they were sharing together. Cause I'm like, dang, I could only just see him be kicking here and there and, yeah. and, and see the belly just grow every now and then. So it was just like, okay, I guess I'll just wait till he gets here. That's so crazy. I've never heard that perspective before. Yeah. So I was, I was a bit jealous just oh. seeing their bond and connection throughout, you know, the whole entire pregnancy. And then. Uh, but it, it does change. It does change once that moment happens. I um, I, every every father I was talking to prior to you know uh, delivery, they always say you know watching watching your wife give birth, it's it's unexplainable. You yeah. know, and even to this day, I will say yeah, it's still unexplainable. You cannot explain it as 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 a dad, as a as a, as a man, you still can't explain that sequence that happened. But the minute you see that head, the minute you see that that baby pop out, you're like. What? <laughs> what? And you did that. Like, yeah. you guys created that baby. Like, in that yeah. moment, is so special. Yeah. What's Thank your favorite you. thing about being a father? Um, I think it's, um, you know, I think it's, it's one of those cases where a, a lot of my anxieties, a lot of just the things that I would just worry about, like, you know, you know, when we go through our own downfalls, when we have our own moments, we just think, ah, oh, it's the end of the world now. You yeah. know, I mean? like, <laughs> kill me right now. You know, <laughs> but, <laughs> that's. That's where we feel, you know, knowing that a lot of that I get to just let go because, uh, you know, I can't carry this too much because yeah. I got I got a son to tend to. I got a baby to go ahead and, and take care of. And he needs to go ahead and see the strongest version of, of a man, which is going to be me. He's gonna, yeah. I, I'm, I'm his dad. He's going to see me his, his whole entire childhood growing up. And he's, you know, so I want to make sure I represent, you know, what I would want him to go ahead and be, you know. Yeah. And, and so. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more consideration exactly. to your actions, to your life. Yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, one of those things is just, yeah, just putting a lot of stuff that would hold me back, keep me down and just throwing it away. It made it a lot more easier, you know, just to do that. 
So your long term goals for yourself? Okay. I binge watched Sports Center. If you guys sports, sports fan, yeah. so I, you know what's so funny? I said that last night. I was <laughs> we went. My best friend and I went out, and I was like, Sports Center. Like, dude, this is. Wait, no, it's not. It's Sports Fan. I corrected myself. Now, don't get me wrong. If I was on Sports Center, then <laughs> we up. We are up. <laughs> if I'm Sports on Sports Center, Center. Sports Center. All right. Um, you have your next best candidate. Let's do it. But I binged watch Sports Fan, and I was like. This is so. It was like watching your life. Yeah. But obviously, I I have the cheat code because I know your life. Exactly. But it was so, it was portrayed so well that like your life is quite literally like a movie, like a show. Uh-huh. Like your, how excited, how passionate, how goofy, how funny, all of the things were. Like I did not feel like you were acting. Like I was yeah. watching this and I was like, oh shoot, this is not actually Darius. This is another <laughs> character. But you you guys did. You absolutely killed it. And let me tell you, I don't know what it did to my brain chemistry mm-hmm. to see your name in the credits yeah. as the executive, like, producer, writer, screenwriter, all yeah. these things. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> my friend is killing it. Man, and I think so it's much. so special. So what is it to you to be somebody who is now, like, writing shows and, like, in the script room? And, like, you know, you're acting. Yeah. You're doing all these things at yeah. one time. So how has that changed your life? Ah, man, it's uh, honestly, it's been a great learning experience along the way. Um, you know, obviously, um, I, it's, it is just like just as much as you're saying it was a cheat code. I feel like I almost have a cheat code as well on who my partner is. You know, yeah. uh, she with with Key TV, building that network up and giving a lot of opportunities for for creators. So many people. So many it's people. Really beautiful. It, it, it really is beautiful to go ahead and see. And that really gives everybody a voice and to allow them to expand their creativity. And so um, that being said, you know, working along the way. I've been doing this for now about three years or so, and so I've been handed many, you know, audition scripts and whatnot. So it was one of those t- cases of taking notes of like how the uh, how these scripts are being written because I really do love storytelling. It's, yeah. it's, it's almost neck and neck. I almost love, yeah. I, I think storytelling and writing, I almost like more than acting. And um, and so once I was able to get my hands on a project, then they're saying, hey, you know go ahead and do this let's, let's go ahead and make this into a a fun sitcom series because i love sitcom I, love a good sitcom oh my god give me your top three real quick top three like for me i'll say sister sister yes. fresh prince yes and then oh the bernie mac show then then grew on me within the last several months because that's what we've been yes. watching so i was yeah. definitely a fresh prince girly okay but i also have started like tapping into like friends as well i love friends as a show but the older i get the more i realize a lot of things about it so i was like oh. <laughs> it's just still i mean but yeah you know, it, it's still nostalgic for its own reason yeah you know? and i like i used to watch the george lopez show and like girlfriends you know like those kinds yes, of shows yes, that were yes. like about family and community and like yes. i love it i love it, it. exactly so you know that, and that's one thing for sure about sitcoms that you know they they really give you the overall, you know, a really good, wholesome meaning, wholesome messages yeah. throughout these episodes. Even even in the craziest episodes with, you know, the, I, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, it was Fresh Prince and Carlton couldn't join that frat because I was thinking he was a sellout. And Uncle Phil was like, no, 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 no. I, I don't work hard for my family yeah. to go ahead and be in this position. And yeah. I'm not going to be having anybody call me a sellout when I've been representing my own kind and moving what I got to go ahead and do for my own family. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? It's just those kind of stuff that, that really just resonates in you. Yeah. And so uh, wanting to just make it into a sitcom form, you know, it, as, as also wanting to be, you know, aspiring creator and continuing to move forward, I, I really do want to be a part of a lot of projects that, you know, could really bring some, a lot of wholesomeness into it. And so with yeah. sports fan, you know, you're talking about a, 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 this current day and age, this millennial influencer, he's a sports influencer. And that's, that's what almost everybody now wants to go ahead and do it nowadays. Yeah. And so it's just like, with that comes along, like it comes along a lot of just our own needs and we're really tending for ourselves a lot. So how are we going to go ahead and bring a guy who's truly trying to accomplish his own, his own dreams of being an influencer and implement that into him having his own family because yeah. you know when you're having your own family you're as selfless as you have to be as selfless as you possibly can be so um that was really more that, that was the the direct message we really wanted to go ahead and implement into that with him being you know a young millennial influencer like a lot, a lot of us there's still a way around this everybody you know we could we could you know we could still go after what we want to go ahead and do while also finding the love and finding the family that we always envision for ourselves. Yeah, there was a lot of compromise in that show, which I liked. And also, like, you or your character tying in your, like, family with your pregnant girlfriend and then also a wife and then also, like, still 
being so mindful of your father yeah and like his needs and like yeah. the competition for him and like what it meant for you guys and then your best friend and the sister-in-law i love the dynamic between the sister-in-law too that was hilarious <laughs> that was hilarious because i feel like that's how i am yeah. with my best friends like partners it's mm -hmm. like yeah not too much though like right, 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 right. <laughs> like yeah you're funny i'll do it but like don't mention it <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah and, uh, it's, yeah amanda that that that's that's um amanda michelle that's that's um, the girl who played Tina, my sister-in-law. Yes, yeah, yes. it was it was fun. It was definitely a fun dynamic, and we definitely want to explore that because you know almost every sitcom has that annoying character. You know, yes. it's, it's, it's 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 Jazz coming over and Hillary rolling rolling her eyes, or or um, uh, 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 what's Marcus Houston's character on Sister Sister? Uh, uh, what's what's his character's name? Oh my, Roger. Roger. Go home, Go Roger. Home, Roger. It, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yes. it's, it's uh it's it's those kind of characters that every sitcom has where it's just like uh but then they always bring the light they always bring the fun vibes into it yeah as well. so in the show mm -hmm. you are a beagles fan I am. like a crazy fanatic beagles fan right. but obviously yep. if you've been following darius for more than five seconds you know that he is a huge eagles fan so i want to talk about that i want to talk about the eagles okay and what they mean to you yeah start to finish like how did you become an Eagles fan and why are you so passionate about this team? And, you know, I saw you at the games. So just all in all, like mm -hmm. what they mean to you and your experience in being such a fan, because also side note, Darius has a YouTube channel where he's dedicated to the Eagles, just talking about the game, going live, talking about the players and stats and stuff. And I don't know too much about football, babes. I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> I always say like to Darius and, his group of friends are all sports fans, like huge sports fans. So whenever we would hang out and stuff, I'd be like, I want to be excited too. Like, I need a team, damn it. Like, yeah. I need I need to get with it because you guys are just having a blast. Yeah, it, so, it's, it's, it's fun. You know, all that aside, what do the Eagles represent or mean to you? So, um, you know, it, it's it's one thing for sure is what I mentioned about my dad. He, he had these games on every single Sunday. And it was a way for us, you know, my brothers, our family to come together to watch them. So that that's the first immediate thought when it comes to uh, you know the Philadelphia Eagles. It, it's, it was it's family, and that's something that we don't we talk about on a regular basis. Even when the season's not playing, we talk about oh did they did they sign anybody yet? Did they trade for this person? Did you see what this guy did? You know that. So it, it becomes it, it's it, it's it's part of our household. It's part of our conversation. So it's definitely a, a huge family tie-in. And from that, you know, it, a lot of passion grows. It, there's a lot of uh, fun memories that come along with it. Um, I like to go ahead and compare it to, you know, anybody that could be a huge fan of whether it could be a team, mm -hmm. whether it could be an artist. Like, I know you love your girl, Riri. Rihanna. <laughs> what does Rihanna mean to you? I can't even tell you. Honestly, I could tell you. I feel like she is the embodiment of the energy that I seek uh -huh. as far as confidence and like beauty and not really caring about what people think or seemingly yeah she's effortless at it so Absolutely. you know so so it, so it hits it, it, yeah it, it hits here and the there's a way. reason for you're it you're always yeah. going to be attached to that you know so yeah. so with the eagles you know you start putting these scenarios into this team and it's crazy because they're just out there playing a game yeah but if, if, if you know if you see them down by two touchdowns and then they come back and they score three touchdowns at the end of the game and win it's like you're almost now feeling motivated it's like wow these players really came together and they just show you even if you're about to lose you could still win it's just those messages that you start taking in and and it goes yeah you really internalize a lot of those moments in time which which is why it really hits very deep for me so yeah that was deep even if you're losing you can still win come on life even if you're losing you can still win mm -hmm. that's the gem of the episode there's always a gem in the episode and that's the one yeah so you know um when the eagles won okay the super bowl oh yeah i was at a bar yeah watching and i literally you know i wasn't paying too much attention i look up at the score and i was like no way and I told somebody, I was like, I know Darius is live right now. And I had to go find your live. And I was watching it. And when they won, I literally cried yeah. with you. I, was I literally I was, was sitting there like, I'm so happy for him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what this team is, but go Eagles. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It was, um, you know, again, it was, I remember that day we was, once again, our family came together and we were just like, let's, let's go ahead and see what they're going to do if they win. Because you're going against Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you're going against Tom Brady, you're like, all right, we'll see how this goes. So, but, uh, you know, the fact that they use, again, you just see how they're fighting throughout the 
whole entire, you know, mm-hmm. game. Nick Foles came through and, and did it for us. And I was like, <laughs> Here you go. You going back down I'm memory about, lane. I'm about to go back down memory lane <laughs> doing this right now. But yeah, and then like uh and then once that ball dropped and he said it's the end of the game, I'm me, my brother, and my dad, yeah, we all came together and we all really gave beautiful. each other the biggest group hug. And I was like, ah, oh, that was like Again, it, it was like that big group hug made me feel like if I was four years old again, you know, four or five years old again. So obviously, when you're feeling that young, you're just you go. you're Here just you starting go. to acknowledge, you know, it's make me cry. <laughs> it was, so it was a very deep, special moment. My dad was very emotional about it too. It was like yeah, again, you guys so, are just like the embodiment of love, like yeah. and passion. Yeah, absolutely. And that's so sweet. passion, absolutely passion, very passionate. Like yeah, very passionate. Passes me to passionate. <laughs> yeah, but that, it's okay to be those things, you know. Like mm-hmm. I feel like you're not somebody who. Um, takes it and like makes it not fun Mm -hmm. you know and like you know i'm sure sometimes it's frustrating to like if you're having a bad day because the eagles lost or like whatever you know like that's not something you can control but that aside you have taken your passion and you put it on a platform Mm -hmm. and now you have these fans who are also supporting you in Mm -hmm. your passion Mm -hmm. and you know i really see you on sports center being the commentator during the eagles games or you know, something like that, because like, why not? And you're right. so quick with it and you're calling out things and like seeing things that yeah. it's just like, you know, the stats and you know, these players. So, you know, that aside, I do have a game for us. Okay, let's do it. Let's, Are you, let's, let's, can you guess what it is? Okay. Um, is it charades? Uh, charades? No. Okay. Right. No, it's not charades. It's Eagles trivia. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's go ahead and do Are this. you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to tell you, in the last 48 hours, I have learned more about the Eagles mm-hmm. than I would have ever in my entire life. Okay. But here are the questions. All right. Let me go. So how many questions am I getting in? You're getting 10 questions. 10 questions. How many do I need to, to, to pass or get the approval? Do I need to have to get all You of need them? at least eight questions. You need at least or eight Or at least questions. seven. What's, if we're on a grading scale, like a 70 percent, sounds like a C. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So at least seven. Okay. 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 You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> what was the first Super Bowl appearance for the Eagles? What year? Uh, 1980 against the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> okay. What was the Philadelphia Eagles' first season in the NFL? What year? 1933. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn, I thought these were hard. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Those two were easy. No, nah, I'm okay. not going to lie. It's, 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 I'm, I'm, those are the questions that worry me are the ones that happened before I was born. Be- yeah. Before the, the... But you clearly know your stuff. Let's so. do it. Let's continue. Okay. This former Eagles offensive lineman from the University of Tennessee wore number 78 when he was drafted as a first rounder in 1991. Oh, 1991. Yeah. Oh, man. I, oh, gosh. I, I would not be able to go ahead and get this <laughs> offensive lineman. Uh, whew, I mean, his? you're learning something new right now, yeah, then. Yeah, go ahead. What's Antone the name? Antone Davis. Antone Davis? Antone, yeah. Antone Davis? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call my, my, my dad about them because I haven't been stumped right now. Okay, so... Where, no, oops. In 2000, the Eagles selected this DE who left training camp before the first preseason game to pursue his musical career. Whoa. (laughs) I found good questions. (laughs) Man, defensive, defensive and a Uh DE uh who left training camp. Training camp to pursue his music career. Yes. What in the world? Yes. Would you like me to tell you? Go ahead. John Frank. John Frank. Yes. John Frank. We're going to have to go ahead and talk about this right now because. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. This is like a, something that th- this guy was known for in the Eagles. Okay. Okay. Name the Eagle who played with an unbuttoned chin strap. McNabb. Donovan McNabb. No, that isn't often though. No, Ben Hawkins. Ben Hawkins. Okay. These are just really particular questions now. Let's, let's I'm telling on. you. I was on, digging. Hit me. I was <laughs> hit me. Hit me. <laughs> okay. You should know this one, though. Since being called the Super Bowl, how many appearances have the Eagles made to the big game in the first 40 years of the Super Bowl era from 1967 to 2007? Two. See? All right. You do know this stuff. Okay, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, For the one season that the Eagles merged with the Pittsburgh Steelers, what was the team name? Steagles. You weren't even let me finish the question? (laughs) No, you're right, though. You're right, though. Okay. Um, former Eagle and later Falcon Ike Reese wore which number while in Philly? Fifty-eight. So you were just pretending when you were like, oh, I don't know these questions. Like, no, well, I, I okay. So I became a fan like probably around two thousand one, two thousand two. That was where I really started to get dialed in. Anything else, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty much. Going and we to were in second grade. 
We were babies when you became a fan. That's yeah, so was, cute. That is little, so cute. Little Munchkin walking around. Okay, last question. Okay. Which year did the franchise have their first winning season? Oh. <gasps> and we're talking like we're. Uh, this is so we're talking about. It says starting off in 1933, it took 12 seasons to be in the plus side. Oh, so so then 1945. I'm assuming. <laughs> Okay, I would not have been able to guess that. I feel like I got a little encouragement with that, but you know what? Yes, know, you passed. You so that okay. was so good. I tried. I tried. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Okay, and I finally, tough. I want to give the people something, some okay. some entertainment. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and most of you don't, Darius does an amazing Obama impersonation, and I would just love for you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you do it. You give me. Um, you're tapping into your actor's bag, really, and your okay. in your in your um, writer's bag as well. Okay, okay. Yep. I need you to give me like a monologue or like a anything that you mm -hmm. want, but it has to be in this Obama impersonation. Because you know how um you know how he has his legs crossed and um oh my God. Uh, very very much so uh, poetic mm -hmm. uh, the way he he speaks. Come on. Come now, on, uh, Mr. President. you know, uh, it's been it's been quite a privilege uh, to be on here uh, talking about it with Kate. And uh, what we've been doing is talking about it. What it is is um, talking. So being here, I'm just very uh, happy. You know, it's been a long eight years in the Oval Office. Now I'm just, you know, torn. Been doing my tour and doing my special appearances, you know. So, um, is just tending to my beautiful, lovely daughters and uh, making sure I rekindle things with my wife, Michelle, because uh, as y'all know, she's been on these podcasts talking about how uh, <laughs> apparently she has, she wasn't happy for you 10 wasn't, years. You wasn't shit. Exactly. You wasn't shit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've been, uh, <laughs> we, we've been uh, rekindling a lot, a lot of trips to Cancun. I'm going to tell you that. So, uh, <laughs> That being said, um, you know, Barrio, once again, here, live, and uh, having a great time with uh, Kate. Well, thank you, Mr. President. It's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Darius, my love, thank it has so been much. such a pleasure to have you today. Caitlin. To get to re-know you, yes. you know. I, I know you, but right. when you hear somebody explain themselves humbly or not so humbly to mm -hmm. other people, it's always like a different insight. So I appreciate you for trusting me with that information. Absolutely. For being so open to be here. Absolutely. And to share you and your family and your baby with me yes. and our friends yes, <laughs> who yes. are watching. I, I for sure want to just, once again, thank you for, you know, giving me giving me this floor. Uh, you know, to, for everybody out there, again, it was the reason why I've, you know, stuck with this uh, 15 plus years. We're going to keep going on. We're going to keep going on just because, you know, you, you, you're, you're a wonderful soul and there's just great spirits. And you're someone that has, you know, no matter what's going on through life, you're going to go ahead and continue to push forward and move forward. And that, that has become an inspiration to go ahead and be like, you know what? That's a great person to go ahead and have around you. That's a great vibe to have around you because that person, whatever is going to go, whatever they're going through, she's going to go out her way to be like, bro, you got this. Let's go ahead and keep going. So, you know, thank you again for having me. And it has been my honor, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I love you. You guys. Follow Darius on Instagram. We will link his information in the bio so you can go ahead and do that. We're going to do all the links. Instagram, YouTube, Key TV for the show because you have to watch it if you haven't, please. And as always, thank you for tuning in today to talk about it with Kate. We will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>